Hey guys, it's Sophie. So I've got an absolutely massive book haul for you guys today. Um, I managed to miss my July haul, so we have two months in one and it's man booker season. Just enjoy, there's lots of books. I've read quite a few of them, but I'm not gonna be reviewing them. Um, I have like an equally large pile of books to be wrapping up um, and I'm gonna do just one long video um, to wrap those up. So the ones I've read, I will just let you know I've read them, but I'm not gonna review them now. First one I have is The Fact of a Body by Alexandria Marizano. Lechnovich and this is one I'm reading for my In Real Life book club. It's one I've had on my list for a really long time um, and it's about one woman and her experience I think of childhood sexual abuse and a man who is sentenced to death um, for the murder of a young boy and how those two interact. Um, this is kind of like one of those like ethical true crime ones and I've been on such a true crime kick lately. Um, I've been listening to the podcast My Favourite Murder for several hours a day, like at least two, driving to and from work, sometimes more if I'm driving to Tom's. Um, so yeah, true crime has just been like flooding my system and I've been loving it recently. Um, so there's a couple more in there that relate to that, but I might pick those ones out for you now. So on the same theme, we have Jane, A Murder by Maggie Nelson, um, which is a series of poems that talk about um, the murder of Maggie Nelson's aunt, Jane, um, and they are just absolutely bloody incredible. Um, I sent quite a few of them to Tom as I was reading them. Um, yeah, it's it's really brutal but really personal and I think that's how I like true crime if possible is to have like a personal impact in it. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fabulous um, but yeah, I need to stop talking about them in too much depth. Um, next for true crime we have The Brothers um, by Masha Gessen and this is a book about the Boston bombing um, and the two brothers who committed that. Um, it's more than just a discussion of the bombing though, it's talking about the kind of um, climate um, that the, the boys are brought up in, um, in terms of kind of wider geopolitical things really, um, and how that impacted on what happened and what they did. Um, yeah, so there's that one. And then more true crime, I have The Adversary um, by Emmanuel Carré, and this is a story about a, it's French actually, French translated true crime, which is pretty cool, um, but it's a story about a man who's killed his family, and um, it's really got a lot more to it than you'd imagine. Um, it is understanding why someone would do something like that, like a murder-suicide, but the man is almost like this lifelong con artist, so you learn a little bit about how he's deceived everyone for so long throughout his whole his whole life really um, so there's this one and then the last for the true crime is something a little bit different and that is American Fire by Monica Hess um, and this one is not murder or violence um, but it's property damage and it sounds a bit weird but like from the cover you might be able to tell it's about a series of fires um, so this is about a serial arsonist who um, pops up around America in Virginia um, and burns down houses that are unoccupied. Um, I haven't read this one, I've, I've read the last three, but this one is the last one on my true crime list for the time being. Then I'm just gonna take you through the non-fiction things that are in that uh, area. Um, the next one I have is Hillbilly Elegy um, by J.D. Vance, which is talking about the um, culture surrounding like hillbillies in the, in the US, like kind of uh, poor rural people. Um, yeah, it just sounds, really interesting and I've read some things about people in the lower class in the UK and I've not really read much like commentary on the lower class in the US so I thought this one could be really interesting um, and a couple of people have said on like Instagram or anywhere else I've posted this that they've really enjoyed it so I'm looking forward to that one. Then kind of similar to true crime but slightly on a tangent is The Art of Cruelty by Maggie Nelson um, and I love Maggie Nelson obviously I've got another one of hers in here as well um, and this is a non-fiction book about what cruelty is, why people are cruel to one another, what motivates that, um, why we like to watch bad things happen and sort of the cruelty that's in every person. It talks a bit about taboo as well in here I think. Um, yeah, so this is non-fiction kind of essay writing um, about a specific topic rather than about Maggie Nelson, which I think could be quite interesting. And then the last non-fiction I have is one I was literally just sent um, by Pam McMillan and that one is This Really Isn't About You um, by Jean Haller Eldenstein. And I love this cover, I think this is one of my favourite covers of the year so far. Um, this follows a woman who moves back to the, U the US because her father's dying of cancer. Um, and she's she's trying to deal with his death um, 
and as she's trying to deal with his death, she is told that she has the same gene that gave her father the cancer that killed him. Um, so she's trying to learn about how to deal with death and also with her own mortality. Um, I just thought it sounded absolutely fabulous and this one is out on the 23rd of August, so not too long to wait. Okay, so that's everything for non-fiction. Now I've got a huge pile of fiction. Uh, the first one I don't know if I've hauled or not, but I thought I'd show it, and that one is I Love Dick by Chris Krause. Um, I picked this one up so many times because of the cover, but wasn't drawn to like buy it until I heard it talked about on what page you are on podcast. Um, and it's essentially a story about a woman who becomes obsessed sort of intellectually and sexually with a professor. Um, and she's married and her husband is fully aware of this and it explores ideas of sex, obsession, art, um, writing and with, with this book it feels like it's autobiographical and you wonder whether um, Dick, the main character, is someone in reality. Um, yeah, so that's this one. Um, it's more than just a flashy cover, though I love the cover and will display it for as long as I can. Next is one I picked up and I just I just had to, I just couldn't wait to pick it up and that one is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Moshveg. I read Eileen and I was kind of meh about Eileen but this one just sounded so up my street. Um, it's about a woman who is going through a bit of a rough time after she breaks up with her boyfriend and decides that what she needs is a year off to sleep. Um, it is it's just fabulous, I'm going to talk about this one more um, when I wrap wrap it up, um, but it deals with um, over medication, with mental illness, with how people treat and see mental illness, um, what it's like to be on meds, and, and just so many wonderful things. I, I love this book. Um, it's probably one of the ones I'd recommend most of this haul. And next I have Outland by Rachel Cusk, which I have spoken about already um, as I took this one with me to Turkey. This is the first in a trilogy about a woman who is travelling to Athens to teach a creative writing class. And next I have Crudo by Olivia Lang. Um, you've probably heard this one spoken about a little bit now, um, it's been quite popular on the internet. Um, but this is Olivia Lang's first novel, she normally writes non-fiction. Um, I've read two of her books I think, um, and yeah I've, enjo I've enjoyed them but I haven't loved them and I think similar things for Crudo. Um, but this is a picture of Brexit Britain and Trump America and the experience of that summer that we had when all of these things happened um, and I do think it's fabulous for that itself. Then I have two which are the Penguin European Writers series, the first of which is The Beautiful Summer by César Pérez, um, which is about a young woman who is coming of age um, in Italy and she falls in love with a, with a woman um, and it's about that relationship, it's really short, just a kind of little novella. Um, and the next one I have from that series is Death in Spring by Merce Rodorera. Um, and this is another coming of age story about a young boy who's living in Catalan. Um, this is a very otherworldly, strange book, um, which is kind of all metaphor, but if you read it as it is even, it's really unsettling, creepy, and just puts you on edge. Um, yeah, it's like nothing else I've read, really. And the next one I have is another one that's a novel told in poetry, and that one is Northward by Marissa Meher. Um, and I was so excited to get this one. This is experimental and weird and really cool, like, different layout of a book. Um, and the poems individually form, like, a greater whole, and I think you don't quite get that when you first start. Um, but as you, like, piece things together, it just kind of becomes this strange little story of um, abusive relationships and when you know when you're in one and how that affects you down the line and finding yourself after them. Um, yeah, things like, okay, I'll just read you one little bit. Um, this one is called Enemy and it says, when you caught your breath, you smiled. Sorry, you said, I'm sorry, tracing circles on my stomach. You talked in a normal voice about something I didn't hear and then you looked up after a while and said, oh, why are you crying? Yeah, so they're just kind of short, tiny snippets and you have to kind of piece the story together, like what's behind what's being told. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting little book. That one is on sale in November, so a little bit of time to go for that one, but November this year that one will be out to buy. And then we've got some man booker books, so we're still going. I just put in a long video, I did say. Um, so the first one I got was In Our Mad and Furious City by 
Guy Garante and this is a story about um, two young boys who live in a tower block um, and an English soldier is murdered near to where they live um, and I think it's by, some, by someone who's also Muslim, I'm pretty sure the boys are Muslim and it's about how their community responds to that act against them, I think. I might be wrong. And the next one I have is Everything Under by Daisy Johnson. Um, this cover, guys, it's underwater weirdness, but it isn't. I think it's supposed to be just like, I don't know, it could easily be like the ground. It's very pretty. Um, Daisy Johnson wrote Fen, which was a short story collection, um, all set sort of in the countryside in, I think it was like um, the like southeast but I might be wrong. Um, and this one is sort like of a longer novel length piece about a young girl who um, grows up to be a lexicographer um, and she kind of remembers when she was a little girl um, and she used to live in a canal boat with her mum and they spoke in a made up language and she's kind of remembering her girlhood. Um, yeah. And next I have From a Low and Quiet Sea by Donald Ryan and I've heard only good things about this book. Um, this is three different stories, um, one person called Farouk, one person called Lampy and one person called John. Um, and this is, I think, set in Syria and in Ireland um, and, tra and kind of traces these three men's um, journeys. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to expect with this one but I've just heard such good things. It doesn't sound like on the base of it, like totally my thing, um, but I've just heard so many beautiful like reviews of it and look at the cover as well, like these covers they're just, you know, they're just amazing. I think so much effort and like craftsmanship goes into book design these days. I think it's just stellar. And next I have The Long Take by Robin Robertson and this is another book told um, in verse. Um, this is about a man who is suffering from PTSD and has come home from a conflict and is trying to find himself as he moves through a number of US cities. Um, yeah, I'm interested in this one. It, it doesn't look kind of like traditional poetry format, to be honest. It looks more like kind of small vignettes. Um, so we'll see how it how it fits in kind of that verse element. There are kind of bits that look a bit more poetry-esque. Um, but yeah, interesting like format anyway. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. And the very last one I have is one I'm part way through and that one is The Overstory by Richard Powers. Um, this is a story which has trees at its centre um, and sort of brings together lots of disparate characters who have some relation to trees but really it's a book about trees and I'm really really enjoying it. Um, it reminds me stylistically of um, A Little Life in terms of the writing and a little bit of, I forget what it's called every time, a little bit of a Doubter's Almanac by Ethan Kanan. Um, and yeah, I, I read a little bit to Tom actually. We were like having a walk going to Instagram this book and I was just reading him bits because it's just one of those books that packs so much into such a short space and time and you, you feel like you know people after a very short space of time. Um, so yes, those are all of the books that I have bought. There's a lot of them. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed just hearing me chat about books for 15 minutes or so I expect. Um, yeah, I've read a lot of them actually. I think I've already read like half of what's there. Um, so I am buying and reading as I go. Um, and I've got a couple more mum bookers that are on their way. Um, one I've actually got, but it's at Tom, so I can't show it to you. Um, and the other one is not out yet. In fact, there's a couple that aren't out yet that I've pre-ordered um, that I will be sharing with you maybe next month, um, maybe in September, we will see. But for now, that has been just a massive two month book haul. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any that you're really interested in. Um, I think this one sounds fantastic um, <laughs> in particular and I would really recommend my year of rest and relaxation like of the bunch I've read. Um, yeah, I'll chat with you guys again soon for either a man book review or a massive wrap up. Bye.